Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, I hope you've all enjoyed the journey to South Shields behind this class 35 Haymack running number D7005 so I hope you've had a pleasant journey and I hope you're all keeping well and as you can see this is a brand new loco to the layout um, so yeah I haven't got that many diesels so I was uh, nicely surprised when I um, opened this up Christmas Day um, it's a special edition EFE rail in partnership with Backman and Helgen as you saw, it's a very, very smooth runner, um, and it's lovely detailed as well. I mean, I haven't added all the vacuum pipes and everything that comes with the box as of yet, but uh, I may do that at some point. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we just about barely get a five coach train into the platform. Um, still a little bit more room at this end to pull it forward but that means to release the diesel I'm going to have to pull all the coaches forward from the other end but uh, that would be a different video I think the ins and outs of running at South Shields it's all good fun Right, back to the build. So this is where we left off um, with the greenhouse on top of, I mean the skylight on top of the roof and um, as you can see I'm beginning to build up the stonework. Just by adding layers upon layers of cold. So it looks like stonework, well hopefully when it's painted, we'll have to see about that one. Um, I did have a comment about um, water runoff from the roof, well that is a good question. I've had a little bit of a think about it, I can have a couple of downpipes, one in there and bring it round and one in here on the two corners and bring it round. So it's, uh, I can still do that. I may have to use a, a little bit of solder wire for the bends, but yeah. So, let's crack on. Right, so here we are, we're back at the bench, where it all happens. Well, not at the moment. Um, this is the design I was hoping to put onto the wall um, above the um, loading bay. Um, it's a bit um, a bit fancy and over the top I think but um, Victorian arch architecture was like that um, if you notice really at the bottom there there's 1879 now that was the year that the station was built so what the plan is is to put the 1879 in between the two t pillars at the top here so let's go and have a look what I've done so far so this is what I've done so far. I've got uh, two rows of bricks there with capping stones and that's gone up to four bricks high there. Well not bricks but st st stone um, blocks as it were because uh, this is going to be painted in a stonework colour. And as you can see I've got my 1879 there. But um, I think I might have a change. I think I might put the 1879 up on the top piece on top of here um, yeah I might do that actually so as you can see I've cut a piece of card it's two two pieces of two mil card so that's four mil thick and um, it hasn't come out particularly good so in order for me to get a better profile 
across the top I'm going to super glue the, all this top edge and then let it dry and then give it a sanding as you can see there's a little bit of a flat spot on the top of the radius there and um, the only way to lose it is to use the thermal because um, the super glue has gone like plastic rock hard it really soaks into the card Well, that took a while to get that radius um, looking equal on both sides and as you can see I've got the 1879 on there and I've capped it off so that's just ready to glue onto the stonework shall we have a look oh well, let's just place that on there shall we try it up in the middle <sighs> it's alright that. Right, so the next thing to do is to paint all this stonework in a sandstone colour. And we shall see what it looks like after. So here we are, we uh, we finished painting it and uh, as you can see these walls here are slightly light around the capping stones because before um, I'd finished painting the yellow uh, matte 74 I went over with some white to really bring out these stones a little bit more because it was uh, too dark um, so yeah I think that seems to have worked um, the lines you see here on the on the stone I've done that with pencil and the pencil seems to be coming through but we'll have to wait and see until the paint is fully dried. Uh, I have now completed the weathering of the sandstone just by using grey paint um, on the edges to start with. Let it dry for a little bit and then add some slimy dark green um, which I normally use for um, mould and the like and it just brings that out along the edges so that's that finish so now I can concentrate on the roofs either side I've also um, dirtied up the skylight as well just added some dark green on there and just wiped it off so now we concentrate on these roofs. Now these are not going to be elaborate as the centre section. So all I'm just going to do here is just add some tiled card, the Metcalf card that we've got over there. And uh, we're just going to put it over here. Um, I don't think I'll even bother putting any skylights in. I just think I'll just tile it. And then I'll add the guttering along here. And then what I'll do is I'll add some guttering from the underside of these um, sandstones so that we've got water runoff from inside there, otherwise it'll become a swimming pool. <laughs> so that's next. So as you can see I've put in extra card in this back wall here um, that's to support the roof because I don't want any incringe on this 10 millimeters I've got here because that's for supporting the apex roof 
So let's have a look how I'm going to tackle this. Now a basic length of Metcalf card sheeting is roughly 280 millimeters. So I'm going to have to join this card. Roughly in the middle of this beam here and hopefully blend in the tiles from one side to the other and hopefully as you can see you can see some light bleed straight away off these early days I'm hoping the paint will hide that but um, I think what I might do I might put another piece of card in underneath on them sections um, wherever there's an LED so what I'm doing to join this piece of card edge to edge is I'm just going to glue a piece of paper which is roughly about 16 millimeters wide so 8 millimeters will go on this piece of paper and 8 millimeters go on the other side of the piece of paper and hopefully glue these two edges together Flip that over Make sure that the edges meet. Which looks good to me. Then I shall wait till it dries before I start scoring and then marking out for the windows. So now that it's dried, the next phase is to scribe the tiles. Now you've seen me do this hundreds of times before if you've been following me throughout all my builds. Um, it's the most effective way to get the detail out of the card. Because as you can see, it's there already, but um, it needs pronouncing, it needs highlighting. And the only way to do it is to describe it. Um, this, I think, is one of the biggest and longest roofs I've done. Even on the main building, all the roofs were little roofs. So there's probably thousands of tiles here. Or maybe hundreds of tiles here, probably exaggerating. So this is going to take a while. Well that took a while and a while later it's all been scored using a pen. And what I've also done on the back side I've marked out where each of the supports are so that I can cut a piece of card and try and block out some of the light bleed that's coming through the card. Uh, and also what you can see here is a center line of where the cards, two cards have been marked for windows. What I'm going to do, I'm going to glue them in place and once the glue's gone off I can cut them out and then put a skylight in. The skylight will be flush with the roof. So I'm just using ordinary wood glue for this, the old PVA. And uh, well, I'll just leave this overnight and then I can cut it out later on in the morning. Just line up the lines, the centre of the windows with the lines that are already on there. And then hopefully when that goes off I can cut the windows out. We have moved on a little bit, um, as you can see I've added some guttering. It's the same as what I've used on the other side of the station. 
it was left over from the Pico Oval roof set and all it is it's the long strip and all I've done is I've cut all the flashing off of it and squared up one face so it's nice and flat you could do the same with 4mm rod square up one edge just chamfer it back with a stanley blade or something so you get a nice flat edge so you can glue it onto card like what I've done there and um, also I have cut out the windows for the roof so that's ready now for the um, window frames and glazing so I want to concentrate now on the other side and get it in it up to the same and this is what I've done so far if we pan back you can see I have cut the card to a radius um, following the curve of that top wall and um, I'll show you how I did that in a minute what I did I marked it there on that edge where it's 2 mil, the top line and I marked it there on the edge of that uh, capping stone and, uh, and that gave me the curve obviously I have marked it here on the edge of the guttering on this side and I've put the guttering um, on the office wall as well if you can just about see it uh, let me lift the roof up, there you go there you can see it So if you can just imagine that I haven't cut this card yet and I've marked it there and there for to get the curved radius so what I did was I pushed a bit of blue tack onto my cutting mark and it's got quite a good grip and I've got a rule and placed it where the pen mark is there and paste it and placed it where the pen mark is there and then I just drew a line between the two and got the perfect radius and once I got the radius I just got a pair of scissors and I cut it apart and it gives me a perfect match for the curve of the roof now we have a little bit of a problem here that the card is not long enough so I'm going to have to do the same as what I did to the other roof is add a little bit of an extension onto it so as you can see I've added the extension and I've trimmed the curve exactly the same way as I've done earlier and as you can notice you've got the set tiles running one way and the set tiles running the other way so what I'm doing is I'm picking a point here and I'm picking a point here and as I'm scoring I'm scoring between those two points and it doesn't matter what happens to the tiles in the middle and hopefully by the time I get to the top the tiles will all look the same way because as, as you can see they don't look um, in line with each other at the minute so we'll see how I get on so as you can see I'm just about nearly finished scoring the straight lines just got a couple more to do and I'll be able to show you what's actually happened um, with the straight lines and how it's straightened out the whole look of the roof right so as you can see although this was slightly up my picking a point from there and scoring across has straightened it out now, 998, 999, 999, 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003 as you can see it's a long and slow process but if you switch your mind off you can just get on with it loads and loads of little tiles pressing quite firmly so the imprint stays on the card until it's painted 
So I've made a start on the windows now um, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the other roof. As you can see, this is the same size as the window on the canopy and somehow it doesn't look right on the roof so I've decided to add two little strips on the window uh, 0.2 by 7.5 this is a 1mm frame so by doing that it just changes the look and it looks right this does not look right to me so I've just added the two strips on it just to make it uh, well look right <laughs> Now that the roofs are glued on, um, don't look all that impressive compared to the other side. Uh, but I guess it's just a plain roof. There's, there's not a lot um, else you could add to the roof. Um, some lead flashing to go in this corner here, which is uh, the next job. But uh, the main detail is in the centre building, I think. I think that's what uh, makes all the difference. So that's the next thing to do, put the lid flashing in, um, and we can paint the roofs and then we can add some drain pipes. Um, I have now painted the roofs in a satin grey. Um, so I'm just waiting for it to dry and then we can add a top coat of matte black rubbed in and then wiped off quickly like we did over at um, platform one. Um, the lead flashing is painted silver as well so that will darken down at the same time as I come to do the, uh, the weathering of the roofs. And that will be them finished. So we'll just let them dry and while they're drying I just want to show you what I'm doing for drain pipes. So drain pipes, here's one I've made earlier. Um, it's the first one I've made for this building. Um, the solder wire I'm using is 1.18 in diameter. Now then the wheels drain pipes is 1.20 in diameter so it's a it's somewhere close and that's how I'll gauge the the scale for this drain pipe. Um, I've also used 0.25 brass wire which I coil round an allen key which is 1mm diameter and then cut off a couple of coils and then super glue them in situ. Now I've seen Paul at Galgam Hall make um, drain pipes and he tends to twist, um, leave the ends long and twist them and then drill them into the building. But I can't do that with this building because the walls are only 2 mil thick. And not only that, you'll be able to see any holes from the other side because it's open plan, as, as you know. So this is my first attempt. I've got quite a few more of these to make. So once this is painted, all I'm going to do is just a couple of dots of super glue on all these brackets and just super glue it onto the building rather than drilling. But yeah, this is my first attempt um, and the first one for this building. So I've got quite a few to make. Um, and uh, these are the little tiny, I don't know if you can see these, but these are the little tiny coils. The ones There's a couple on that piece of paper, I don't know if you can see them. There. And that's just the brass wire coiled up. And another good thing about using solder wire, once you get it nice and flat, nice and straight, you can bend it to any shape you want, like I've done here. Because that comes down on the brick wall, offsets off onto the stone wall um, so it's quite easily to manipulate 
I suppose with any wire you can use, you could do the same thing with. Dance mark it. Bend it up. And then bend it back. Right at the end. Bend the tip up. And then just cut it back. So I've added some black to uh, the grey roof now and wiped it off as soon as I put it on and uh, as you can see it's gone right into the tile grooves as it were. So I'm pleased with the way that's come out. I've probably left it a bit late adding the black so I normally add the black while the grey is just about um, still tacky so this roof's ended up slightly darker than those roofs over there but uh, I've still got to add the green yet so Here at the colliery uh, is where I first made some drain pipes out of um, soldering wire. As you can see, they're all right, but the brackets let it down because all I did there was just use some yoohoo glue and um, wrapped it around the soldering wire and then painted it after it was glued onto the building. And um, if we have a look at the new ones, they've come out a hundred times better. So as you can see with these drain pipes, um, you can actually see the coils wrapped around the drain pipe to look like brackets. So that's uh, a great tip from Paul at Galgan Hall for... Um, show me that but you don't have to use solder wire you can use any wire as long as it's uh, one mil plus in diameter to make the drain pipes and a very fine wire to coil around the drain pipes so that's this building completely finished now as you can see I've, I've done the roofs I've added the green slime like I've used in many uh, times before and there's a little downpipe there to stop the um, flat roof filling up with water. Alright, it's not a classic looking building on this side. But uh, a little feature in the middle makes all the difference, I think. Uh, I think that's all from me now. i just like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers um, for supporting the channel commenting give me advice and just basically just saying hi as well um, there's been a lot of new channels come on this year um, which is great it's great for the hobby it's great for the community because um, we we all have one goal and that's to build something like this model railway so let's just hope that 2021 becomes a better year uh, I'm sure it will and uh, on that note I'd just like to wish you all a toast Happy New Year everybody and all the best for 2021